Welcome to Strength and Conditioning Considerations for the Performing Arts, presented by UNLV PT Dancer Screening Clinic. My name is John, and together with Kristen and Laura, we will present to you today. The goal of the presentation today is to develop an understanding of the role of strength and conditioning in dance, debunk myths around strength and conditioning, examine what does the research tell us, and explore exercises to consider. So why is strength and conditioning important for dancers? Well, just look at what your body is doing. Every movement is a beautiful combination of art and science. Millions of electrical signals are being sent through your body and your muscles are responding with precise fluid motion. So if we break down these movements, we can identify the fitness demands of dance. Endurance, strength, balance, coordination, power. They're all blended together to create the art we know as dance. There's no argument that dance is demanding, especially in terms of fitness. However, research is showing us that dancers often struggle with their fitness, especially strength and cardio. This directly impacts the ability to perform and increases the risk for injury. There's really good news. Research has shown strength and conditioning can bridge that gap and provided the needed stimulus to create protective and performance adaptations. So what is strength and conditioning? I'm kind of a nerdy guy, so I went out and created my own definition. So here's my shot. It is the application of science to improve movement through adaptation. And what I mean by that is that by studying how the human body works, how it reacts and adapts to certain stimuli, in this case, strength, cardio, and mobility exercises, we can develop programs to optimize our movement. Dance is really good at teaching efficiency of movement. However, dance practice is never as hard as performances. Dancers rarely get, it, get to spend a lot of time stressing their bodies at the same level that they do during a performance. So what can we do to prepare? Through strength and conditioning, we can train to better prepare for these increases in workloads. Research has shown that through strength and conditioning programs, we can improve performance and that's both aesthetically and physically. We can show greater improvements to endurance. That way, when fatigue kicks in, your plie in the first minute is the same as the plie in the seventh minute. It reduces injuries, and our goal is really your longevity, to perform at a high level for as long as possible. And that takes an investment, and supplemental exercise is key into developing a long dancing career. Today's presentation is far from everything you need to know, but we just wanted to make some suggestions based off of the research we've read. So here are considerations for a supplemental exercise program. First, we understand life is crazy. We're college students ourselves, and time is a luxury. But the fact that you already spend so much time being active is good news, because you don't need that much more training to get these performance and protective adaptations. Only a few more sessions of cardio or resistance training a week is needed to get these great benefits. That being said, we need to follow evidence and use exercise principles. First, what we need to do is create a needs analysis. This is basically a list of areas you can improve in. That way we can be specific and individualized training to what you as a dancer need the most. Not all training is equal or produce the same adaptations. It's easy to fall in a trap of training incorrectly and not seeing any benefits. Luckily, dance performance research is expanding and we, we now have better knowledge of how to optimally train dancers. Next, we need to progress appropriately. This means you need to build a foundation before you're going crazy on Instagram workouts that look really cool but aren't really functional. In simple terms, don't do too much too soon. Last, let's talk about overtraining. Research has shown that an exercise bout right before a dance session will lead to decrease in performance. So do not go to the gym right before a dance class. A good supplemental exercise program requires time management and constant self-reflection. So check in with your body's needs. How is your stress level? Are you eating correctly? How is your sleep? And make adjustments to your program accordingly. Finally, don't be afraid to discuss with your teacher, us, or any other medical professional any symptom that may be concerning you. Often, being proactive leads to better results than being reactive. 
Next, we'll look at some myths in the fitness world. Hello everyone, my name is Laura and I will be talking about the different myths that are uh, revolved around strength and conditioning. So the first myth that we will be debunking is that strength training will cause you to look bulky. This doesn't accurately describe the process and benefits of strength training as studies have shown that there isn't a linear relationship between increasing muscle strength um, and increasing muscle size. So just because you feel like you're getting stronger doesn't mean that you'll have that same amount of muscle size increasing as well. Um, I want to get into some definitions here of different uh, things such as muscle hypertrophy, strength, and endurance. So muscular hypertrophy is defined as an increase in muscle size as the muscle fibers increase in diameter and volume. Muscle strength is the maximum force that a muscle can develop during a single contraction, and muscular endurance is the ability of muscles to sustain forces repeatedly or to generate forces over a certain period. So if someone were to build muscle mass, they would be more along the lines of uh, muscle hypertrophy, and that is they're performing a lot of uh, repetitions of heavy loads um, more frequently and they're going to be doing other things such as um, factoring nutrition as well. They would be continuing this regimen for months and years on end, and it'll take a very long time for them to build the bulk that they're anticipating. Uh, however, it is all about balance. Strength training that would be beneficial for dancers would include a balance between muscular strength, which is high load but low repetitions, and muscular endurance, which is low load, lots of repetitions. So just to um, elaborate on the 80 to 100% of max and things like that in the definition. So this is based off of a one rep max. This means that it is the um, maximum load that someone can um, lift in one repetition. So for example, if I can only uh, lift 100 pounds of one repetition of 100 pounds, I mean, that means that if I wanted to do um, 80 percent of my one rep max and I want to focus on muscle strength I would be doing two to five repetitions of let's say 80 pounds instead of 100 pounds because that would be my 100 percent rep max um, so for dancers it would be important to balance between muscle strength and muscular endurance because in performances the performances and rehearsals are for a longer period of time you're constantly um, using utilizing your muscles and doing a lot of lifts or um, jumps or whatever the routine may involve. And it is important to target these aspects of strength training. Additionally, as I've said, nutrition has a role in building mass. It is important to have an equal balance between the amount of calories that you are taking in versus the calories you are burning through exercise. In order for individuals who are uh, focusing on building larger muscle mass rather than just maintaining muscle mass, it would require um, a higher caloric intake versus the amount of calories that someone is burning. So for example, um, a lot of people who are looking to build muscle mass will tend to increase their amount of protein intake so that it is replenishing their normal process of muscle breakdown and buildup that comes with strength training. But as I've said, um, for dancers, it would just be more so important to have an equal amount of the calories that you're taking in um, and the amount of calories that you're expending through exercise. So the next myth that we will be debunking is that strength training will make you more stiff and less flexible. There's actually little evidence that supports the idea that strength training reduces flexibility. There was a study in 2005 that looked at the interaction between uh, doing resistance training and flexibility training. And what they found that resistance or strength training doesn't have an effect on flexibility and they suggested that it would um, be beneficial to include both resistance and flexibility training in your uh, typical um, exercise regimen. What has also been found is that too much stretching can actually result in um, loosening more of your joints and ligaments that would put you at risk with injuries. Um, this is why strengthening is important so that the uh, muscles around those joints are getting stronger and they are providing more stabilization and support to reduce risk of injury. So um, with the physiology of stretching, it increases blood flow to the muscle and it reduces tension. It feels really good to do right before 
um, your your rehearsals or um, typical classes. But actually, if you are stretching for longer than a minute, there's a chance that the muscles will actually be too relaxed and you wouldn't want that right before a rehearsal or performance because that because then that would result in other muscles taking over and um, those other muscles will eventually increase the risk of being overused and could also increase risk of injury. So to summarize, it is important to have a balance between muscle strengthening and stretching um, and that it is important to also regulate the duration of holding out the stretch. 30 seconds is uh, good enough to do stretches and um, there are dynamic warm-ups that you can also do that would be really in, um, beneficial prior to practice or uh, rehearsals and we'll go over that um, later in the presentation as well. And also strengthening the muscles of course would help your muscles move through the ranges that you need to um, perform the different dance routines and skills that you have. Although there are other myths that we can debunk, the last one that we will go over is that strengthening the core mainly consists of flexion movements like crunches and leg raises. So what makes up your core? When defining what the core is, it isn't just only the abdominal muscles. It is also the muscles of your back, your diaphragm, the lumbar spine, the pelvis and hips, and even your nervous system, as the nerves are what innervate um, your muscles and control your muscles, and that is known for motor control. You may find that doing leg raises when focusing on core exercises results in really sore hip flexors. That is because your core isn't only for flexion movements. The core is also responsible for stabilizing your body when you perform movements in your arms and legs, and it is also responsible for anti-rotation and deceleration control. Strengthening your core will require more than just the one direction movements that just mentioned. It will require multi-directional movements and other forms of exercises that will emphasize the multiple muscles and segments that I mentioned. And these exercises are like planks, side planks, bird dogs, and more. We will demonstrate some of these exercises later in the presentation. Also, it is worth mentioning that these, this uh, image over here has some um, core exercises that you can look into as well. Now that you have learned about what strength and conditioning means and the myths related to it, what does the current research say about strength and conditioning? First, more ballet companies are encouraging strength training to their dancers because its effectiveness in decreasing the rate of injury is evident. At the Australian Ballet, annual injury statistics reveal that dancers who had an injury had a single leg heel raise endurance of less than 25 repetitions. This resulted in calf and ankle injuries, and to combat this, the company had the dancers perform 24 parallel single leg heel raises at the end of ballet bar daily. At the Royal Ballet, their female dancers often suffer from foot injuries due to point work, and overall, a majority of injuries reported occur below the knee. To protect their dancers from injuries, strength training has been incorporated. Injuries to the lower back and lower extremities are common in dance. Moira McCormack, a former professional dancer and a physical therapist specialized in ballet, conducted a study about the physical attributes most desired for classical ballet. She discovered that injuries are often a result of decreased pelvic stability and core proprioception. Strength training is important to increase a dancer's bone mineral density and to help attenuate landing forces from explosive movements with their muscles and tendons instead of using their bones and cartilage. Strong muscles are needed at the trunk, pelvic girdle, and hips to form a foundation for balance, stability, and muscle coordination required to perform basic movements at the bar or complex movements during center work. A study by the National Institute of Dance Medicine and Science discovered that a year of conditioning can reduce the injuries from 4.14 per 1,000 hours of dancing to 1.71. Not only does strength training reduce injuries, but allows for dancers to develop technique. Dancers need to understand the aesthetic and technical side of the art and to be physiologically prepared to handle certain demands. In order to do so, they need to be injury-free and physically fit. 
Having muscular strength provides support to joints so that dancers do not have to compromise their alignment. Additionally, muscular strength provides dancers with the physical capacity to jump great heights, perform complex, diverse movements, and stabilize extended positions. In a study by Andrea Kozai, a certified strength and conditioning specialist, found that strength training can improve technique development. Dancers had improved petite allegro jump height and pointed feet while jumping due to strengthened hips, thighs, and calves. The fourth point discusses Pilates and yoga. Both are great body weight exercises. However, body weight will not be enough to overload the muscles and these exercises may not achieve the variance needed that will strengthen the stabilizer muscles to support the action muscles, which then can lead to overuse injuries. Pilates and yoga often focus on the same muscles used in dance. Therefore, strength training is a good supplement to train other muscles. Lastly, Current research has recommended that dancers combine strength and endurance training. Strength training consists of high resistance and low repetitions, whereas endurance training consists of low resistance and high repetitions. In order to mitigate the effects of fatigue, strength training and conditioning should be completed well before scheduled performances because the body will need time to rest and adapt. And to make exercises more specific and functional for dancers, there are recommendations to focus on developing unilateral strength, endurance, and balance to allow both legs to provide support independent of each other. As research has shown a significant number of injuries in the lower back and lower extremities, the following exercises will be a good start to strengthen your core muscles, gluteal muscles, quadriceps and hamstrings, which are your thigh muscles, and gastrocnemius and soleus, which are your calf muscles. An example of a core exercise is a plank. Start by placing your forearms on the floor with elbows aligned below shoulders and your arms parallel to your body shoulder width apart. Make sure to squeeze your glutes, neutralize your spine, and keep your head in line with your back. Imagine pulling your belly button in towards your spine to avoid collapse of your back. Additional core exercises include side planks, which engage your obliques, bird dogs, and bridges. An example of an exercise that can target all three of your gluteal muscles are lateral and monster walks. If you have a resistance band, you can place the band above your knees or around your ankles. Position your feet shoulder width apart, keep the resistance band taut, and face forward with your weight evenly distributed over both feet. Bend your knees slightly and maintain the half squat position as you take steps sideways. Throughout the exercise, keep your hips level and back straight. This exercise is called lateral walks. To perform monster walks, the setup is similar, but instead of taking steps sideways, you will be taking steps diagonally as you move forward or backward. Additional exercises for your gluteal muscles include bridges and clamshells. An example of an exercise for your thigh muscles are squats. Start by positioning your feet shoulder width apart with your toes pointed slightly outward. Slowly bend at your knees while dropping your hips to lower your body. Keep your heels flat on the floor and your knees straight. If you find your knees caving in as you lower down, place a resistance band above your knees as an external cue. Additional exercises for your thigh muscles include lunges in various directions and step ups. An example of an exercise for your calf muscles are heel raises, which were mentioned earlier in relation to the Australian ballet. Start by positioning your feet hip width apart then raise your heels off the ground, transitioning onto your tiptoes. Hold the position for about one second before lowering your heels back down. An additional exercise for your calf muscles includes single leg balance, which can also strengthen your foot intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. So earlier we touched up on the myths about strain training reducing flexibility and that that wasn't the case and how we talked about how a balance between flexibility and strength training is important. So what we suggest here is a five minute dance warm up video that is made by Shaw Bronner. She is a uh, physical therapist who does a lot of research in dance medicine. It's a dynamic stretching or warm up video that is really good to use to uh, pretty much heat up your, your muscles and your body and, and start to do more movements without any extreme range of movement. 
and this is really helpful to implement before um, before or after rehearsals and, and performances and such. Here we have some resources to suggest for you guys. Kristen made an awesome exercise handout that has instructions um, that are written based on some of the videos that she showed in the previous slides as well as more exercises that weren't shown in the videos. We also have an Instagram that we just made and we are hoping to add more um, videos of instruct instructing different exercises that would be helpful. And there's also another Instagram that we like. It's the Ballet Strength Pro and he's a strength and conditioning specialist who shows a lot of different exercises that you can do that are specific to ballet or other different styles of dance. Here are the references that we used uh, for our presentation. We hope that you guys enjoyed our presentation and the information that we have presented today. If you guys have any questions, we, we will be hosting a live session um, possibly next week. We're still working out the details of that. Um, so if you have any questions, just write it down and feel free to ask when we do host the live session. Thank you.